All right, next up on our journey of competitive research, we are gonna look at AREFs. Um, I was familiar with this software as being available, but I had not actually dove into it like I had uh, wanted to until just recently. Um, the company reached out to me and offered to give me a little sneak preview of it to see if it was something that could fit the needs of either you know for me or for um, clients, and I've, Got to tell you, I was really, really impressed when I had the opportunity to dig into it. And I told uh, the company as well, I said, there's just so much more here than I thought was available because in my mind, this was all about uh, just backlinks and backlink data, but there's just, there's a lot more available. So um, I'm going to take a, a few minutes of your time to walk you through it because I want to give you uh, another piece of um of software that you can potentially utilize in your competitive research for SEO purposes. Again, this is just like all the rest of them. You're going to find something that suits your needs and you're going to pick that one and probably stick with it. So um, we'll just we'll just dive in. So this is the dashboard I've put in SiteGround as our base URL. Um, you know, some some just quick data points at the start or at the, at the, at the beginning, uh, you can see some ranking that they're giving. And just like with the other software packages, if you're not really sure what something means, you can just hover over the little eye and it'll tell you that this is the domain ranking. Um, higher to 100 is better. Um, and this is the URL ranking. Now we get to see backlinks, uh, referring domains, where those backlinks are coming from, uh, organic keywords in the mix, organic traffic, paid traffic. We get to see some quick social media stats, which is wonderful to see. Um, then we can start to see some data with um, the backlinks and the referring uh, domains over time. And you can look at this as one year, all time, just 30 days. Uh, additional data down here, the pages crawled. I find this is a really interesting point because um, you'll see that with the pages crawled, this isn't necessarily going to equal the Google index and uh, it, it won't at all. In fact, I started to crawl the SiteGround website um, with DinoMapper and I ended up abandoning it because it was just taking so long. So there's a lot more content out there uh, on their server and available than what is actually inside Google. So look at that number before you kick off a uh, dino map or a crawl because you might be surprised at how long it's going to take. Um, so just some additional data points on this overview is the new and lost, um, both backlinks and referring domains. And then the country, this is kind of cool because it's giving you a shade of um, based on the countries of where those links are found. And then um, more anchor data. We saw this in the prior reports and, you know, it's just solidifying what, what we saw uh, and, and experience is that, you know, they have a lot of um, inbound links coming in for WordPress tutorials as well as web hosting and they're ranking for both. So that makes perfect sense. Um, WordPress hosting uh, is showing up as well and free WordPress themes. So um, definitely, you know, those that anchor text and those inbound links, as long as it's natural, is is certainly helping um, with that the the individual ranking of keywords within search. Something I like down here too is this little guy right here. He is um, a URL ranking distribution, so he is showing you where those those um, the 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 they're, they're, the, the, the URLs are ranking, sorry, I'm stumbling there, um, from, from a green to a red. And you, you do have some reds. And the larger the site, and it seems like the longer the site's out there, the more you're going to get this distributed. Um, this is actually a, a fairly uh, broad distribution. I see a lot of different ranges when I look at URLs. And a lot of times you've got them all hidden down here with, with the red, which isn't great. Um, but just, you know, some, some additional data that you can look at. There's a um, tab that we can look at for organic search traffic to see some trends. And, you know, this is the interesting thing is this is really different than what we are seeing on other the other tools that we that we viewed for SiteGround. I didn't see this big drop off for them, although we're seeing it here, which I, I find interesting. Um, then there's paid search and then you can get a top content with an overview. Beautiful part about this is look how pretty this is. It gives you. Um, you know, the, what it would look like in search, the number of shares, um, the social media uh, networks that have been used for this. So just some nice data points. You'll see to the left that there's so much that we could go through. So you've got content or, and reports available all up and down the left and right. You've got options for, for exporting this to 
um, uh, an Excel file or a PDF, and then you've got options of on the top. They actually have some really good alerts, and I actually turned them on, but then they started to uh, drive me crazy because they were just there were so many of them, I couldn't keep up with them, so I had to turn them back off. But if you know if you you want to set an alert, and you want to know of new backlinks or activities um, associated with a keyword, the great great option for you to utilize. Okay, so what I'd like to do now, I spent quite a few minutes on that first page because there was so much data there. I'd like to just move through some of the tabs that I've saved so we can see some additional um, opportunities uh, for data. So this one is just organic keywords and um, it's just clicked over here on this tab, or excuse me, on the sidebar. And it's showing you some distribution of um, keywords that they're ranking for and here we see WordPress tutorial again we saw that on some of the other software the position for this one shows three which is dropped to a little bit different than what we saw I think it was on SEM rush they had them at position two but still it's giving you a, a good idea of you know where they're ranking with the volumes the associated URL um, you know and, and very nice breakup um, so that that's great data, which again you can export just like we could on SEM Rush, which would save you time and kind of collect that data that you have in Google Search Console, but put it all together for you in a nice presentation. Um, and there's also just a lot of different types of um, filters that we can do, and you know breakdowns just to kind of really be able to dive into keywords and focus on um, opportunities for you. Okay, so the next tab is, is top pages. Um, this guy's right over here. I love this because just like SEM Rush, you're really seeing where traffic's coming into, um, what type of keyword distribution that they would have from how many keywords that are available um, in search per URL. And you can really see that, you know, like we look at this and we see that the, the WordPress tutorials are truly driving a lot of visibility and traffic as are those Joomla templates, um, even though this is a hosting company. You know, they're utilizing that education and those uh, those other services and offerings to really bring in traffic, um, get that goodwill with potential buyers, and then, you know, bring them over to their hosting and, and, and purchasing their services. Okay, so this guy is competing domains. So I didn't put any domains in here. I just allowed the software to do it. So the software is bringing up um, a list of potential domains that it sees competing with us or with the SiteGround domain um, and then gives you some, you know, some common, or excuse me, some data points associated with that. So this is a really good tool for figuring out who your potential online customers are or competitors are. Um, you remember I said, you know, at the beginning of this course that um, who you think are your competitors in a traditional standpoint, a lot of times are not your competitors online. And here we have InMotion Hostum popping up again, which we've had over and over every tool we've gone to, they've popped up as a potential competitor that we didn't have on the list, as well as WP Beginner. That was another one that we've we've noticed on other reporting tools. Um, so now we have some more, you know, on some training websites, um, uh, you know, um, domains and things like that. So lots of different um, versions of competitors that we can review for potential focus for keywords and ideas for both online marketing and then long tail phrases that we might want to go after. Okay, so the next, um, the next uh, report that we have access to is competing pages. You'll find that over in the sidebar. Um, you know, similar to the other reports that we're seeing, but this is now structured uh, based on top pages and we get to see the full URL um, and then there's some additional data for that. So I won't go through all of that, but you know, just know that this is out there along with some great filters and an export option, which makes everything better. Uh, so the next tab is a content gap. So I was allowed to put in um, three different domains and then compare that to SiteGround. And so this is showing you domains where those, or excuse me, keywords where those other domains are ranking, but not necessarily SiteGround. So I could see where I'm just totally missing the, you know, the, the ball on potential keywords. Now, granted, I could care less about ranking for GoDaddy email if I'm SiteGround, but maybe if I'm looking at this and, um, you know, if this was a smaller case scenario and I'm looking at this activity and I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I'm missing out by not offering email and, you know, maybe that's a service we want to consider. I don't, I'm just throwing that out there. But this, there is a lot of good information that you can um, find from this type of data. So moving along, let's look at backlinks. So now this is, I thought, 
you know, this software was all about backlinks, but I've just discovered all of this additional data that I had no idea was there. Um, so the best places to find backlinks, this is, you know, or best pages by backlinks. Um, so this is, I find this for this information for SiteGround really strange um, because it's not what I would expect to see. Uh, and there's templates and things like that. So, you know, for I would have to really go into a lot of different websites to see if this is truly as valuable as it could be and reliable as it could be. Because I have figured out that, especially with the hosting companies who have subdomains and they have staging and they have client websites and staging underneath their domains, um, things can get really skewed really quick. And so you do have to take that into account on um, you know, a URL basis, depending on what type of industry you're in and what you're looking at from a competitive viewpoint. Um, best pages by shares. I love this data because you can really start to see what's getting shared a lot and what social networks that they are using. The other reason I love this data is because it reinforces the fact that social media is very important to SEO. You have to have an active social media presence if you want to rank in today's um, environment of organic search. You cannot avoid social media and expect to be a ranking superstar. I mean, it worked 10 years ago. It doesn't work today. So um, some fun data here to review and go through. Um, this quick batch analysis uh, this is oodles of information. So I was able to put in all of our domains and I'm, and it just, the software just pulls back all of this data and nicely puts it together for me in this beautiful presentation um, that I could actually, you know, export over to Excel. Wonderful data. Um, you know, if you're doing, if you're an SEO consultant and you're collecting information for your clients, wonderful source of data. If you're an in-house marketer and you're trying to collect information um, to present to your management, this is wonderful data, especially if someone were like, if you were site ground and someone came to you and said, why is GoDaddy always, you know, ranking more than us? Why do they have more opportunities? You could start to be able to pull some information and say, well, they've got a significant amount of backlinks, which, you know, dwarf us in what we have available. Um, that said, SiteGround's doing a wonderful job and they have lots of backlinks, but it just kind of gives some good data points on why one domain might be ranking over another and, you know, what you can do to potentially fix that, that problem. Um, Link Intersect is interesting because now this starts to show you where um, multiple domains are receiving um, inbound links from the same URL. Or the same domain. So I put in SiteGround, GoDaddy, and WP Engine, and it's showing me that, for example, um, NetValue, or however you pronounce it, you know, they have shared links. GoDaddy has significantly more links coming from that domain than anybody else, but you can see that they're both on there. They're both, um, or excuse me, all three of them are on there with activity, and all three of them have links and traffic potentially coming from them. Um, Meetup.com is another one. You can see the WP Engine is the most active on it, um, but GoDaddy and SiteGround both definitely have a presence there and have um, links and potentially traffic coming from those sources of data. Uh, this is a, another beautiful report that allows me to put in multiple URLs and now it starts to give me um, data coming back um, with activity and uh, you know if you want to see where people are spending some time you can see that GoDaddy's got a lot of activity going on in Google Plus. A lot of people say it's dead but there's a lot of activity going on there. Um, you know and you, we can see some reinforcement that GoDaddy and HostGator are very active on Facebook but WP Engine not so much. Uh, LinkedIn, gosh, everybody in this, this, this little area just kind of ignores LinkedIn. GoDaddy's got the most activity on it, but not much besides that. Um, the interesting thing about Pinterest is we saw on another software package that one of the hosting companies, either Bluehost or HostGator, was active on Pinterest, but it's not getting supported here with the data. Uh, so, you know, if, if Pinterest is potentially a, a solution for finding links and incoming traffic, you know, we, we would review that further to see really which one is more accurate. And then we just get some additional information that we were seeing in the other reports from the software, but nicely collected and all pulled together for us in one report so that we could um, potentially um, export this or, um, you know, view this from uh, um, offline. Okay, so next we've got um, a view of keyword specific. Well, I thought this was all about 
inbound links. Well, it is, but they've also got beautiful keyword data as well. I put in WordPress hosting, you'll see up here at the top, and now I start to get some beautiful reports on it from search volumes and um, clicks uh, to global volumes to similar keywords and um, some search suggestions. Um, so really just nice, beautiful data. It gives you the um, keyword difficulty again. You know, in today's SEO, um, you, it is not just about keywords. It's, it, you have to take into account keyword difficulty because there's, it's just so um, complex and, and um, there's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, it's no longer black and white and it's no longer just a few data points of, you know, content versus links. There's a lot of data that goes into that from social shares and types of links and sources of links and, um, you know, branding of that URL that, and that's what those, that keyword difficulty kind of helps collect for us and give us um, an overview of it. So definitely worth taking note of. And the last area I want to show you, um, which I honestly just discovered when I came in here today, is the most popular content. You can put in a keyword and then you can start changing time frames. And I put that I just wanted it to be um, in the last 24 hours. And you can start to see activity with content, uh, social shares, and then you can sort this by the value of the domain or the relevance or who's sharing the most on Twitter right now or getting shared the most on Twitter. Um, really powerful if you want to um, find some good articles to share and to promote on your own social media um, channels. I can even sort this and have it only show me um, content of a specific word count, uh, which is wonderful as well. So just a nice added value. And when I look at the software, I, you know, I think there's such, so much good here. This is where I would always say it's, this is like frosting on an already good cupcake. I mean, it's just, it gives you additional data really good um, for a marketer and just a wonderful tool that you can utilize um, both for competitive research and for outreach on social media and just kind of trying to reach a new audience. So um, lots and lots of wonderful data available in this in this software tool, both for digging into your own website and your own ranking and your own content, as well as that of your competitors and finding additional points of opportunity where you can go after um, inbound links or content that you could write and, and um, you know, really try to showcase yourself, your product or your service offering. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and you consider using uh, AREFs in your competitive research.